If the host of CBC Radio's Quirks and Quarks has his way, we will celebrate Canadian science more. It's no secret science has come a long way from gee whiz, gosh golly, look at this electric light. As scientists rocket ahead into the nanotechnology, robot talking, clean energy world, award-winning journalist Bob McDonald records it. He's the host of CBC Radio's Quirks and Quarks and the host of a new documentary called Magical Mystery Cures. It is my pleasure to welcome Bob McDonald to Vancouver to Studio 4 to tell us more. Good morning, Fanny. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, this is fabulous. Thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. Take me back to you in science class. What, uh, <laughs> when you're about 10, were you blowing things up or uh, anything? You know, actually, I wasn't that good at science. In fact, I was a terrible student. Um, oh, and I, I don't like to talk about this, but I'm a dropout, believe it or not. Really? Uh, yes, even though I've been honored six times by universities with mm -hmm. honorary doctorates, I actually dropped out because I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. I took English and philosophy in school. <laughs> but I grew up in the space age. I watched them walk on the moon. I, I, I remember Sputnik. I remember the first time mm -hmm. the Sputnik went up, and I was inspired by what science did. I just wasn't very good at doing it. So <laughs> I, I'm now in this wonderful position where I get to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I get to meet the people who do it and, and see our, our cutting edge of our knowledge progress as a journalist. So I'm in the best of both worlds. Of I don't course. have to do it, but I get to celebrate it. You get to learn and yeah. marvel yes. and carry around a marble. Oh, well, I, you know, you want to talk about why science is so neat. I have this lovely marble that I picked up at a, at a science museum, and it's um, an accurate map of the Earth. And it's a, a beautiful blue marble. We like to call the Earth the blue marble. Mm. But this globe is based on satellite photographs. And to just give you an idea of how far we have come, when I was born, we didn't know this. We didn't have a photograph of the Earth because we didn't have satellites. The first satellite was 1957, mm. Sputnik, right? And you and were then, born in 51. <clears throat> yeah, oh, thank you very much for mentioning that. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this, just within my lifetime, we got a photograph of the Earth. Now, this is recent. Throughout, throughout most of human history, we didn't even know what the Earth itself looked like. And now, you can go to the Weather Channel, you're, or, or here at Shaw, you, know, you, give, you give pictures of the Earth from space. We have GPS, we're talking mm -hmm. to satellites in space mm -hmm. all the time. We take it so much for granted. And yet, this is all recent knowledge. Knowledge. Sure. And we, and we talk about the Earth in a holistic sense with, with the environment or the oceans and the air and all that. This is all new knowledge. And this is what science has given us. And it's astounding that, that we, we know that, that we not only know about this, that it is a ball, we used to think it was flat, that it moves, that it's part of a galaxy, that the galaxy is part of a, a universe that's expanding. And yet, even in the year 2011, here in the 21st century, we're finding out that the universe is mostly unknown to us. You know, it's made of dark energy and dark matter, most mm -hmm. of it. And, of course, you weren't alive when Galileo tried to convince the world that the Earth was not the center That's of correct. the universe. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't wait to tell the Pope about that. He was <laughs> exactly. <very excited. laughs> and he got into a little trouble, which many scientists do, as yes, you know, indeed. until it's proven. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we know the Earth is round and not the center of the universe and uh, all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It's humbling, Quir actually. Humbling. Quirks and Quarks, you said, and I don't know if you said it on Quirks and Quarks or perhaps on television, that the simplest questions get the most elegant answers. Yes, indeed. And very often the simplest questions come from kids. Mm. Which is why I like working with kids. I have another television series that's running right now on the Knowledge Network here called Heads Up. And it's a science show for kids. And it's all based on questions. Each show, there's 39 half hours and each one of them is based on a question. Why do comets have tails? Well, that's a question that a kid would ask. Why do comets mm -hmm. have... Well, that's hard to answer. Why does a comet have yes. tails? And we've had to send spacecraft out there to find out what those tails are made of and, and how they grow and how they affect us. You know, we have meteor showers because we go through the tails of comets. That's what meteor showers are. And we find out that space is not as empty as we thought. It's full of junk and dust and dirt. And, and uh, so just answering that simple question mm -hmm. like that. Or why is, why is the Earth round? Well, that has to do with gravity. And, and gravity always pulls towards the middle and makes things spherical. But you know, we don't know how gravity works. We don't know how gravity works. We don't? We don't. Einstein died frustrated, not figuring out how gravity works. And he's, they're still trying to figure it out now. This big experiment that they have in Sweden, the Large Hadron Collider, our largest mm -hmm. experiment, and there's a lot of Canadians involved in that. The one force that they can't try to figure out is gravity. So they centrifugal can't force? What kind of well, force? Well, there are all these forces that hold things together, that hold you and I together, atomic forces, nuclear forces, magnetic, electric, and all that, and they're trying to join them all into one big theory. Mm. And the one that doesn't fit, that's sticking up above all the rest, is gravity. It just doesn't fit in with those others. Who they can knew? make them all match except gravity. So here we are. Again, we think we're so smart, and we don't know how that works. 
Don't know how that works. We do know if we jump out of a tall building, we'll die. Yes, we know how it works. Or we know what it does. <laughs> yes. But how it does it, we still how don't know. How it does it, we have no idea. And yeah. the astronauts, I'm sure, as they're up there whirling around, yeah. uh, are trying to figure it out. Yes, because indeed. they're floating around in the spacecraft. And wouldn't it be nice if we could turn it off or make it go the other mm -hmm. way so that we could fall up? Boy, that would save us a lot of energy if we could do that. Wouldn't it? We can make electricity go one way, make it go the other way. We can make magnets pull or push. Gravity mm -hmm. can't do that because we don't understand it. Right, and you could be in front of your apartment building and uh, ascend to there the ninth are. floor. <laughs> Elevators would go out of business. Yeah. Oh, my. How, why do cats purr? Purr. purr all of that You did stuff. that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, why do we age? Hmm. Well, that's a very interesting process, and it's why I did this documentary, is to, to look at both that and uh, some of the <laughs> sort of snake oil that's out there to try to prevent us from aging, because it seems we're afraid of it. We're afraid mm -hmm. of aging. But aging is a natural part. You know that our cells, every time a cell divides, uh, we have these chromosomes on, in our cells, and they have little ends on them that are called telomeres, and they're like the, the shoelace ties on the ends of your mm -hmm. shoelace that keep them from fraying. Right. And every time a, a, a cell divides, these little telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter, and eventually the ends of your chromosomes get kind of ragged. And when that happens, the, the body says that cell is unhealthy, and it kills it. So it, it's called apoptosis. It's a natural part. It's like we're programmed to die. So everybody and has apoptosis. That's correct. So it's like your parts run out. You, we have a, a time limit. And so some people are trying to say, well, maybe we could slow that down. You know, maybe we could put those little caps back on. Or, or maybe we could do something to try to slow down the process, and, which is a very interesting idea. And there is a lot of science looking at that. But there are also people that are trying to slow down the aging industry with bad science. And that's what I wanted to go after. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not after everything in the, uh, there, are, there are great products out there. There are good skin creams, there are vitamins, and there are herbal remedies that work. But there's also a lot of stuff that I found that mm. is just bogus. Mm -hmm. and, and now they're calling it not just the cosmetics industry, as you know. It's yes. the cosmeceutical industry. That's correct. Uh, the nutraceutical That's industry. Correct. Suggesting if it has a gold lid and some kind of magic cell or something in it. Yes. Uh, we put it on our little face, Yes, and the wrinkles will go away. And because of those titles, because they call them cosmeceuticals and nutraceuticals, which are food supplements, under Health Canada, they do not have to go through the same rigorous scientific proof mm. that pharmaceuticals do. So if you want to develop a new drug, a new headache pill, you have to prove it. You have to test it first in the lab. You've got to do it in a little cell dish. Then you've got to try it on animals. Then you've got to do it in humans. And then you have to publish that, and you have to prove it. And it's very, very tightly regulated. So in a drug, when they say scientifically proven, it's been through the mill. It's been through the scientific process. Mm -hmm. Cosmeceuticals and nutraceuticals do not have to do that. Mm -hmm. All they have to prove is that they're safe. That's all they have to say is that they do no harm. So there's a loophole here. And this is something to watch for if, if someone is trying to sell you a product and they'll say, well, I know someone, and we actually got someone on, on our documentary doing this, it's water, it's a water filter. And he said, well, I know six people in China that they drank our water and their cancer went away. I almost fell off the floor. Oh, well, that's they're, they're Kangen water. Yeah. You can't yeah. fall off the floor. <laughs> Unless the floor. you figure okay. out gravity. <laughs> <laughs> or all those forces that are holding the floor together. Okay. But, but the thing was, he was allowed to say that because it's anecdotal evidence. I know mm. someone. I know someone. So and if it's anecdotal, if you say, well, I know someone who drank this and their cancer went away, that's actually mm. legal to say that. They don't have to prove it scientific. But that's not scientific proof. Or, or if, if somebody with a PhD who says, well, I believe in this product, that doesn't mean it's scientifically proven. It hasn't gone through. So what does that mean when they say scientifically proven? Mm -hmm. Push them on that. And, and I found, as in this documentary, as we went through it, I started pushing them on that, and I found that the science just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is confusing the public, and that really bothers me. So if I uh, give you a testimonial, I say sip some Kangen water from Japan, yep. and I say to you, you know what? I took that Kangen water, and my tennis elbow got better. Great. Kangen water cures tennis elbow, in my <laughs> opinion. That's legal, right? Yep, you can say that. And I'm glad that you felt better and that you make the association between the water and your tennis elbow. Great, but that is not scientific <laughs> proof, okay? And, and I'm not against drinking lots of water. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to drink, eight glasses a day? Mm -hmm. Fine. And if you want to drink filtered water, fine. But don't tell me that science mm -hmm. has proven that it cures cancer right. or it cures tennis elbow. That's but, your anecdote. But what okay. if you put chia seeds in your water? Maybe. 
I don't know. <laughs> show me the science. Can you do a show on that? Why not? We'll come back with Bob McDonald.